In this video, we're looking at what happens when a Tesla Model 3 takes on daily life and the reality of owning and using an electric car for all day use. It's a pretty busy day for me. I'll be taking my Model 3 to work, rest and play. So who's gonna run out of juice first, me or the Model 3? The key message you hear about Teslas and electric cars in general is that the battery life is terrible and they cost a fortune when compared to combustion cars. They're just a fad because they're not fit for purpose and they'll get replaced when something better comes along. Well, today I'm gonna let you decide that as I take my Model 3 on what's a particularly hectic day for me. I'll be out and about leaving the Model 3 unattended so Sentry Mode is gonna kick in so we'll see how much that drains with several short, sharp trips. Now that normally hammers the battery in winter because you use all that power to heat the cabin up just to lose it 10 minutes later. You can see today is a nice hot sunny day. That could pose another problem because the aircon sometimes kicks in when you're parked up to stop the cabin overheating. So we'll see how that plays out. I've got my diagnostic tool to hand. Here we go, which will give us all the information we need on charging and battery and things like that. An explanation of all of that is in the description. What's gonna be most interesting is how much energy the battery uses while we're parked, because it's all well and good Tesla saying they'll use 235 watt hours per mile when we're driving, but that's no good if Tesla uses loads of background system which drains the battery when we're parked. So at the end, I'll toss up the true amount of energy that's used throughout the entire day, compare that to the number of miles traveled, so we can get an accurate cost per mile, which includes all the systems that run in the background while we're parked. So am I gonna have any energy left in my battery at the end of the day tonight or am I going to have a battery flatter than a rabbit that's been run over by a Cybertruck? Another massive reality about owning a Tesla Model 3 is the app and you'll probably access it a few times during the day just to see what's going on. You might be worried about your battery getting a bit flat so you can turn off sentry mode in it or if you wanted to preheat the cabin or actually on a hot day like this turn on the aircon before you got back to the car so it's nice and chilled then that's what it's perfect for. You can even see how hot it is in the cabin. Like at the moment, it's 26 degrees because I haven't got the aircon on because I'm trying to make sure the battery usage is spot on for what I'm actually using today. But I'll show you the app as and when I use it throughout the day so you can see how much you interact with it. Last night, for example, my Model 3 charged up mostly on solar, but I wanted to make sure it was fully topped up to 80% before we did this test today. So I just changed it on the app and made sure it was fully charged for today. Some numbers to start off with then. So currently it's saying on the app that we've got 39.1 kilowatt hours of charge, which equates to 80% charge on my screen or 176 miles. Now, if you do the maths on that, that means that 100% charge should get me 220 miles which is 34 miles less than its advertised range because when I bought it, it was advertised at 254 miles. Now, I'm not sure how much of a true representation that is because I believe you meant to charge your Model 3 up to 100% every once in a while to recalibrate, and I honestly can't remember the last time I did that. So what I'll do, I'll charge it up to 100% and post the outcome in my community pages uh, to keep you updated on how my battery degradation is going. Through some teardowns, I believe the battery on the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus is rated to 55 kilowatt hours, but there's only 50 kilowatt hours usable of that. I've had a look on the scan my Tesla app and it's saying a new my battery is 52.4 kilowatt hours but why is there almost like five kilowatt hours difference from the usable versus the actual battery and you'll find that across all electric cars across the range well the theory is that because Tesla guarantee your battery up to 70% retention for either 100,000 miles or eight years whichever comes soonest they can actually drip feed that extra five kilowatt hours into your battery to maintain your mileage and maintain that percentage. So it avoids them having to use their warranties. Now, historical data at the moment says Tesla batteries normally degrade about 5% after 50,000 miles. So it doesn't look like any of those warranties are gonna be triggered. Although the weight mine's going, you never know. But as I said, that might not be a true representation. So how much is it gonna cost me today? Well, generally it's about a fifth of the cost of an ICE car. So whilst an ICE car might have the advantage of electric when it comes to all other circumstances pretty much the electric car wins especially low speed urban traffic now the other bonus that electric cars have is that they're way more efficient than ice cars so for example the Tesla Model 3 is one of the most efficient cars you can get on the market Tesla say it's got a watt hour per mile of about 235 which is just over four miles per kilowatt hour now in reality I generally find you get somewhere between 250 and 300 watt hours per mile depending on the conditions so weather has a massive effect and then your driving speed as well. So it'll be interesting to see what we actually achieve today because the majority of my driving I reckon is going to be low speed urban traffic. So when I bought my Model 3 I was aware it was a massive upfront cost and I'd never really make that money back on the savings because I don't do enough mileage on a daily basis but I wanted to go electric and what I have found is now I've committed to that massive upfront cost my monthly goings out of my bank account is way less because my Fiesta cost me probably about 100 quid a month in fuel to run whereas this I'm not kidding is probably about two or two to five pounds electricity a month extra on my bill so yeah although I've put that massive amount of money up front 
Um, I kind of view that as that's money gone. And now my monthly outgoings are next to nothing, to be fair. It's also nice to be protected against fuel increases because uh, in the UK at least, we've had a recent increase in all the petrol prices and I'm now protected against that. I do have the advantage that I've got solar panels, obviously. So for example, yesterday it charged up pretty much mostly on the sun and I just topped it up overnight with, I think it was three kilowatt hours. So I could do the 80% start for the day. So that would have put on between 12 and 16 miles. And at my five pence per kilowatt rate, that would have cost me 15p. So you can see how cheap uh, the mileage actually works out. So my gym is about 10 miles away. Sometimes I can go dual carriageway. Sometimes I can go through town. It's decided to take me through town today and it's pretty busy traffic. So it's going to be stop and start. But that works brilliantly for electric cars because they really like the low speed driving. So, for example, at the moment, my watt hours per mile is 148, which is awesome. Um, whereas a combustion car obviously would be sat here burning fuel and, and ruining its MPG. Now, what the stop start traffic also does for you is it creates a lot of regen braking. And I've got on the app, I'm recording how much regen braking we're going to make today. So we'll be able to see just how much free energy we put back in the car through regen braking. So that's the first little journey done. We've traveled eight miles. So clearly I don't know how far my gym is away from me. Uh, we've got 188 watt hours per mile, which is awesome because that's way above what Tesla rated it to be. And we've got 169 miles left which is uh, slightly above the target we should have, because I think we started with 176. If we took the eight away from that, we should have 168 by now. We've got 37.5 kilowatt hours left on the battery. So we've used 1.6 kilowatt hours, which is seven and a half P so far. Um, I'm going to be in the gym a couple of hours. We'll leave sentry mode on and we'll see how much battery has been used whilst we've been away from the car. Right, so I've been in the gym about an hour and a half. Uh, sentry mode was on throughout that entire time. And halfway through that, I did actually check the app to see what the temperature was in the cabin. And it was only 26 degrees. So I've parked in the shade. The cabin overheat didn't kick in. So the aircon's not been on during that time. So this is purely sentry mode and then just left stationary parked. Now, when I left the vehicle, it was on 169 miles. It's now 167. So it's mysteriously used two miles of electricity whilst it's been sat here. And I don't think it's been off driving on full self-driving just yet so yeah two miles disappeared through sentry mode and all the background systems that are running we left it with 37.5 kilowatt hours we now got 37 exactly 37 kilowatt hours left so we've used 500 kilowatt hour 500 watts whilst we've been parked up here all sentry mode related right next stop then is my mate's house for a barbecue i'm not going home just yet i think he is probably about 10 miles from here <laughs> i'll guess now what you can do if you're worried about range is actually type in their address on the sat nav so if you do that, and then you can bring up the energy level. And what it does, it's going to predict how much energy you have when you get to that destination. So it kind of gives you peace of mind if you are worried about that. But honestly, range, not a problem with electric cars. So currently on 76%. Uh, when we get there, it should be at 71%. We'll see how accurate that is. Right, off we go. So just on this journey, as I've put in a destination, Navigate on Autopilot has kicked in automatically. This is a function of full self-driving if you buy that. I'll explain the standard Autopilot in a minute. But basically, when you have a blue steering wheel at the top, the Model 3 is controlling the steering and the speed. I just keep my hands on the wheel in case I need to take over at short notice. In the UK, currently full self-driving is pretty limited and it's only designed for dual carriageway and motorways. On Navigate and Autopilot, it will suggest when to overtake slower vehicles and you confirm it by putting on the indicator. And it'll pull out and overtake the car in front. I'm not doing anything with the steering wheel here. You can see the graphics and the visualizations of its surroundings are pretty decent. It shows traffic lights, road markings, cars, vans, lorries. The latest update, I think, even shows dogs. Even though it's only meant for motorways and dual carriageways, it can still handle some quite tight turns. Even this roundabout, but always be ready to intervene as it's not quite there yet in the UK. Navigate and Autopilot doesn't work on all dual carriageways yet. And when it doesn't, it defaults to the standard Autopilot, which comes free with any Tesla. It still does a very good job of keeping you in lane and the correct speed though. So there's that little journey done. So we did travel 10 miles, uh, but it looks like we've used 11 miles from the range. So not too far wrong at estimate. And because it was mostly dual carriageway, our watt hours per mile have gone up just a little bit to 202. Now, one of the bonuses to sentry mode is you can program it. So if it recognizes a favorite location, so it could be your home, it could be your work, or it's any of your favorites in your sat nav, then it automatically doesn't turn on in a trusted location. So it's not gonna be running sentry mode in this instance. So we'll see how much of a difference that makes because I'm probably going to stay here a couple of hours um, and see how much battery it uses whilst we sat still without sentry mode on. 
So I was at my mates a little bit longer than anticipated. Uh, I was in there three hours that we were parked up and we went from 34.9 kilowatt hours of electricity in the battery to 34.7. So I've used 200 watts while I've been parked up there for three hours. Uh, that sentry mode wasn't on that time at all. So that was just all the systems running in the background. I don't think cabin overheat came on. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's any way of really telling, uh, but I've entered the windows halfway through anyway. And the current temperature in the cabin is 36 degrees. So uh, the aircon's going to whack on in a second and bring all that down uh, to something a little bit more reasonable. So I'm off home in a second and then we'll park up for a bit but then I've got to take something over to my parents and then finally end the day by going to the supermarket. So you can see how much boot space there is in the Tesla Model 3 as well. So before we set off though let's just uh, turn on the aircon and make a blasting noise in a second and see what it does to the energy usage. So we're currently sitting at 300 watts that's just sat still running all the systems in the background. You can probably hear the aircon kicking in and then the energy use is now going up to 2.5, 2.7, 3 kilowatts. It's like a crystal maze in here. 4 kilowatts, it's really working hard. And then in a second, that will probably come down. So I'll leave that on the screen whilst I drive home. So that was only about three miles, I think, I can never remember, uh, from my mate's house, so not massive journey there. Um, and we're bang on target on the figures at the moment, doing well on the watt hours per mile. We're above what we were expecting. Uh, so that's really good, but it is a hot day, so it's just aircon, no heating going on there. Now, once I've had dinner, I'm going over with my parents. I'm taking a scarifier over there, which is quite a big bit of gardening equipment. I'm confident it'll fit in the boot space because you can fold the seats down. Where I'm not confident is it whether it'll fit between the, the base of the boot and the lid because it's not a hatchback. So we'll see how we get on with that. And then we'll go to the shops, uh, buy some food shopping a bit later tonight. So that's dinner done. I'm now on the way to my parents and I'll come on to how I got on with fitting the scarifier in the boot in a second. I was probably in my house about an hour and a bit, uh, not really sure. And that used 100 watts while stationary. So that's no sentry mode on, it wasn't hot, so it wasn't trying to keep the cabin cool or anything like that. Um, so yeah, 100 watts used whilst just parked outside the house doing absolutely nothing. So onto the scarifier. Well, actually I didn't need to have any concerns at all. The scarifier was folded in half and it fitted through the boot lip absolutely fine. And once it was through that bit, loads of space in the boot, as you can see, uh, I didn't have any concerns there whatsoever. The only time I've not managed to fit something in the boot, to be fair, was a fridge, uh, which was quite obviously large and square. Um, but then it actually fitted through the back doors. And once it's in, the boot space in the Tesla Model 3 is pretty awesome. So I didn't need to worry about that. But yeah, Scarify on board, over to my parents. They live eight miles away. It's now 19, no, 17 degrees outside. So what I might find is that the heater is gonna start to kick in because I've still got the air con set at 22. So when the heater starts being used, you're gonna see the watt hours per mile gradually creep up because it really eats into the energy use. But we'll see more of that probably when I'm at the shops later on. So as expected, it started to get too dark to film. The journey to my parents didn't use much energy at all and I was only there for 30 minutes. I did have sentry mode on and it actually used two to 300 watts while stationary again. So it just shows how much energy sentry mode uses. Now the diagnostic tool is not super accurate. It will only measure down to 100 watts. So for short spaces of time like that, it's not probably gonna give the most realistic picture. I need to do it over a much bigger space of time to accurately work out the energy usage. Then it was onto the supermarket, which was six miles away, and the heater was really starting to kick in now. So I turned the heating down to 20 rather than 22, because I find on a hot day, 22 is comfortable when the aircon's working, but when the heater's working, 22 is uncomfortable, so I have to turn it down. Is that just me, or do you find you have to play with the heating setting quite a lot in your Tesla Model 3? Again, I was only at the supermarket for about 30 minutes with sentry mode on, and that registered 200 watts of energy use whilst I was gone. But you can see the boot space, again, is more than adequate to fit all your shopping in. Then it was off home to tuck the Model 3 away for the night. So what were the final numbers like? How much energy did we use? And more importantly, how much energy did we use stationary? 
Before we get on to that though, hopefully you've seen from this video that using an electric car for daily life is no different than using a combustion car. I guess the key differences are that you'll never need to go to a petrol station ever again, and every single day you leave your house with a full tank of fuel, not to mention they're a lot cheaper to fill up. According to the diagnostic app, I traveled 36.3 miles, which if you compare that to the Tesla tripometer, it got 36.2, so we'll give or take 0.1 of a mile, I think we'll let it off for that. The trip meter says I averaged 211 watt hours per mile, and I used eight kilowatts, but the trip meter always rounds it up, so you never get a super accurate kilowatt usage from the trip meter. Now the diagnostic app said that we used 8.1 kilowatt hours, which considering I was adding it up in between journeys and the app is only accurate to 100 watts, I think that's not too far off. There'll be some room for error, but that works out as 223 watt hours per mile. But how much energy did we use while stationary? Well, surprisingly, it was 1.5 kilowatt hours that we used whilst just parked up doing absolutely nothing. And that was a combo of sentry mode and the background systems that are always running in the Model 3. So in reality, if we add up how much energy we used while we were out and about, it was 8.1 kilowatt hours while we were driving, 1.5 kilowatt hours while we were stationary, which means between about 1 p.m. and 10 p.m. we used 9.6 kilowatt hours. So you work that over the distance we traveled, the true watt hours per mile was actually 264. And the total cost of energy for all of that at my five pence per kilowatt rate was 48 pence. Eight pence of that was used while we were completely stationary. And then the other 40 pence we used while we were driving. So that works out as just over one pence per mile, including the stationary costs. Regen braking that was generated for the whole day was 3.84 kilowatt hours, which means we got about 15, 16 miles completely free from the regen braking. Hope you enjoyed that little insight as to what it's like to drive around an electric car all day. If you did, don't forget to give it a like by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you're thinking of getting an electric car, don't be afraid to take the plunge. Really no hassle at all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Keep your Tesla animation on point with keeping the wheel config up to date. Go into the service settings to update it and it also helps ensure all the calculations are accurate.